This module covers normal fetal facial anatomy and common malformations in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. The face and neck can be examined from three angles during fetal ultrasound, mid-sagittal, coronal, and axial. The mid-sagittal view provides a profile of the fetal face, including the forehead, nasal bone, maxillary area, mouth, and chin. It also allows visualization of intracranial structures such as the thalamus, brainstem, cisterna magna, ventricular structures, and the choroid plexus. This is the mid-sagittal view, used to assess fetal facial anatomy. Coronal planes demonstrate views of the orbits and eyes and their relationship to other bony structures. In addition, the coronal view can demonstrate the alveolar ridge and the retronasal areas. The axial plane may also demonstrate the eyes with lens, the maxillary processes, and the nasal bones. This diagram represents the coronal and axial plane views of the fetal face. Three-dimensional, 3D, ultrasound can be used to define fetal facial anatomy, and surface rendering with 3D ultrasound may be applied during the first trimester when fetal anomalies are suspected. Fetal facial anatomy at 11 to 14 weeks includes the forehead, nose, nasal bone, maxilla, mouth, chin, and nuchal translucency measurement. Mid-sagittal ultrasound view of the fetal head displaying the nose, nasal bone, and lips. In this image, the ultrasound beam is perpendicular to the long axis of the face and displays the nose with nasal bone, the maxilla, and the chin with the mandible. The ultrasound beam shows the posterior aspect of the mouth region, including the tongue, hard and soft palate, and pharynx, situated inferior to the chin. The fetal profile appears normal. Please take note of the chin, mouth, lips, and nose. Note the standard orbital view with the eyes lens in this coronal view. In this coronal section, we can observe the oblique plane of the retronasal triangle. This triangle is created by the superior nasal bones, the lateral frontal processes of the maxilla, and the inferior alveolar ridge, primary palate. The section is positioned behind the tip of the mandible, which allows us to see the two lateral bodies of the mandible with a gap between them referred to as the mandibular gap. The oblique coronal view demonstrates the visualization plane for the upper lip and nose. This image represents the standard oblique coronal view of the fetal upper lip and nose. Again, this image represents the standard oblique coronal view of the fetal upper lip and nose. The typical facial appearance of a fetus displays the shape of the chin and mouth contours. At 13 weeks gestation, a transvaginal ultrasound in the axial plane shows the maxillary processes, two separate nasal bones, and lenses of the eyes. Take note of the bright area on the image indicating a hyperchoic palate or maxilla. This ultrasound indicates a hyperchoic fetal mandible, which refers to the lower jawbone of the fetus. This section will cover fetal facial anatomy and common malformations, including cleft lip and cleft palate. There are three types of cleft lip. The first of which is a unilateral complete cleft lip, as illustrated here. The second type is the unilateral incomplete cleft lip, as shown here. And the third type of cleft lip is the bilateral complete cleft lip. The types of oral facial cleft palates include the unilateral complete cleft lip and palate. The AR is alveolar ridge, the HP is the hard palate, and the SP is the soft palate.
This illustration represents the bilateral cleft lip and cleft palate. Finally, here is an illustration of an incomplete cleft palate. Facial clefts may be isolated or they may be associated with malformations, karyotype abnormalities, and syndromes. Over 300 syndromes have been described with facial clefts, and the distribution according to the type of cleft is isolated cleft lip 25%, isolated cleft palate 25%, and cleft lip and cleft palate 50%. This distribution has remained relatively constant over four decades. The incidence of cleft lip and palate is reported as 1.82 per 1,000 live births and 1.3 per 1,000 live births, or approximately 1 in 500 to 1 in 1,000 live births. In one study of 101 facial clefts, 57% of the facial clefts were isolated meaning there were no other abnormalities. Among the 43% of clefts associated with another abnormality, 10% were associated with chromosomal aberrations, 12% with syndromes or sequences, and 21% with structural malformations only. Associated malformations are more common in cleft lip with palate than with cleft lip alone and there is an almost 2 to 1 male to female predominance among those with cleft lip and palate. In a study of 6 million births, associated malformations were noted in 29% of cleft lip and palate patients. About 27% of these patients will demonstrate one or more malformations. Among infants with cleft lip and or cleft palate, heart, limb, and central nervous system are the most common anomalies. The left side of the face tends to predominate among those with these oral facial defects. In a systematic review, the accuracy varied widely with 2D ultrasound for the prenatal diagnosis of cleft lip, whether or not there was the presence of cleft palate. Routine visualization of the fetal face and lip should be a part of the mid-trimester scan. Coronal views of the lips, tangential views of the maxillary alveolar area, and a profile view of the face should be part of the examination. In a 2D examination, images are obtained in the anterior coronal plane and the probe is moved from the nose and the mouth to the edge of the lips, thus obtaining the classic nose-mouth view. Serial views should be attempted, and at or less than 20 weeks transvaginal ultrasound should be attempted. This ultrasound demonstrates an axial view of a cleft lip and cleft palate. Note the alveolar ridge with the tooth buds and the hard palate. Current strategies suggest that 2D ultrasound should be employed for screening, and when a cleft lip and or palate is suspected, 3D ultrasound should be the next step. This image demonstrates the three reference planes for 3D ultrasound, which include the sagittal, transverse, and coronal reference planes. Several techniques for 3D ultrasound have been described and include the reverse view technique. In this technique, the frontal plane is used to examine the fetal lips and alveolar ridge followed by a 180-degree rotation of the face on the vertical axis to examine the secondary palate. The planes in the reverse view technique are shown. The yellow arrow represents the frontal plane that is used to examine the fetal lips and alveolar ridge, while a 180-degree rotation of the face allows a view posterior to the face, which provides a view of the soft palate. In the flipped face view, a 3D static volume is acquired, which is rotated 90 degrees so the cut plane is mid-sagittal from the chin to the nose. Scrolling from the chin to the nose allows sequential visualization of all of the important structures, as well as the hard and soft palate. In the oblique face view, the secondary palate is imaged at a 45-degree angle in the sagittal plane and 3D ultrasound is reconstructed in the axial and coronal planes. To summarize, 1. The development of facial clefts is multifactorial. 2. Cleft lip accounts for 25%, cleft palate accounts for 25%, and cleft lip with palate account for 50%. 3. 
The incidence is about 1 in 500 to 1 in 1,000 live births. 4. About 57% of the facial clefts are isolated and the remainder is associated with chromosomal aberrations, 10%, syndromes or sequences, 12%, and structural malformations only, 21%. 5. The antenatal 2D ultrasound detection rate varies widely, 9 to 100% and cleft palate is rarely detected. 6. 3D ultrasound in a tertiary care setting improves detection, 60 to 100 percent. 7. If facial clefts are suspected on 2D ultrasound, 3D should ideally be performed. 8. 3D includes the usual surface rendering and the orthogonal display, permitting visualization in the three reference planes, sagittal, transverse, and coronal. 9. A number of specialized techniques for 3D ultrasound have been reported. 10. MRI at 24 to 37 weeks supports the diagnosis of facial cleft and is better able to define the extent of the defects compared to ultrasound. Micronathia is a condition that represents an abnormal form of mandibular development. In the presence of high-resolution 2D ultrasound, the diagnosis can be suspected as early as the scan for NT assessment. Complex embryonic development leads to this phenotype. Several chromosomal and non-chromosomal conditions are associated with micronathia, including multiple syndromic, skeletal, and neuromuscular diseases and chromosomal and other non-chromosomal syndromic disorders. Many of these conditions can be diagnosed prenatally. This is a schematic of the fetus with micronathia with a reseated chin. The prenatal diagnosis of micronathia can be made by a subjective assessment of the sagittal view or by objective geometric measurement related to the inferior facial angle or the jaw index. Three-dimensional surface-rendered images are useful. Complex investigations are required to define the etiology of micronathia. This image represents a mid-sagittal view of the face of a fetus with trisomy 13 and micronathia. This is a three-dimensional ultrasound image in a surface mode of a fetus with trisomy 13. Note the small, receded mandible, micronathia, along with a thickened nuchal translucency. This section will focus mainly on cystic hygromas, nuchal lymphangiomas. Lymphangiomas are benign congenital malformations due to an abnormality of lymphatic vessels or a failure for the lymphatic vessels to communicate with the developing venous system which usually occurs by day 40 post-conception. The relative incidence is 1 in 6,000 pregnancies. The origins of lymphangiomas and cystic hygromas appear similar with the term lymphangioma generally referring to non-nucal cystic hygromas. 20% of lymphangiomas are located in the axillary area, and they are often grouped as a fetal tumor. Fetal tumors are relatively rare, with an overall prevalence rate of 1 in 10,000 pregnancies. In general, fetal tumors are different from those affecting the neonate or children. The most common histologic types encountered are lymphangioma and teratoma, followed by rhabdomyoma. Careful prenatal ultrasound studies can detect or suggest many of the fetal tumors, since some findings are specific. However, MRI is increasingly a useful adjunct for the characterization and localization of fetal malformations. The classification for lymphangioma is as follows. 1. Lymphangioma simplex, capillary-sized channels. 2. Cavernous lymphangioma, dilated lymphatic channels, and 3. Cystic, multiple cysts of various sizes lined by endothelial cells. 20% of such lesions are found in the axilla. Only 5% occur in other locations, such as mediastinum, mesentery, internal organs, and bones. All lymphatic malformations have an increased risk for karyotype abnormality, structural malformations, nonimmune hydrops, and cardiac malformations. Fetal chest lymphangiomas may have a lower incidence of karyotype abnormalities and structural malformations compared to cystic hygromas detected early in pregnancy. A lower incidence of karyotype abnormalities may also be seen in fetuses with axillary lymphangiomas. 
This is a first trimester image of a cystic hygroma encompassing the fetal neck. 14.3 weeks. Cystic hygroma with a transverse view of the fetal head at the level of the biparietal diameter and head circumference. Note soft tissue swelling around the skull and the thin septations characteristic of cystic hygroma. Cystic hygromas and other lymphangiomas are not different from each other by their histologic stain. 14.3 weeks. Longitudinal view of cystic hygroma. Note the soft tissue swelling, the edema, and the thin septations. 14.3 weeks. Transverse view. Cystic hygroma. The fetal abdomen with stomach is visible. Note the edema and the thin septations. Finally, please note this longitudinal view at 15 weeks. The fetal karyotype is 45 XO. There is the presence of a cystic hygroma with edema, septations, and pleural effusion. Congratulations! This completes the module on Normal Fetal Facial Anatomy and Common Malformations. Please complete the quiz and survey, and then continue with the second module Normal Thoracic Anatomy and Common Malformations.